put together a panel of some people who have some serious opinions. Our crack sports staff and Nyberg joins us too because we know you have an I opinion. I have no opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think this, this thing that happened out in Salt Lake City, I think that's an isolated case. Obviously, it's some sort of an anomaly. You have this kid who has got an anger management problem. He's a psycho of some sort. And that's the type of thing that we're not necessarily talking about. What we're talking about is just general bad behavior in sports, and I think we see it at all levels. I think it starts in the lowest level as a child. You go to games and you see kids playing, and you try to make nice, the parents try to make the kids nice. And then as you get older and older and older, what price success? You know, you, you try to follow all the rules, but you know what? The old saying is, you know, you went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. So does society need to figure out how much violence we want to see here too? I, I think, you know what? There's a, just a couple of bad apples ruining it. Most of the athletes play by the rules, follow the rules, are able to control their anger. Some of these athletes, too, you know, are in spots where they're playing for a lot of money, maybe the end of a contract. We don't know what happened at home sometime and had a bad day. Uh, there's a lot of you know, issues, I think, maybe that can, can go deeper. But I think leagues have to maybe uh, step in, too, um, and, and, and really police this as well. You know, Ron Artest is another guy that comes to mind in, in the incident in Detroit years ago where, where he got in a fight with a fan. I think he should have been thrown out of the league right then, right after that happened. Because as soon as you get the fans involved, now you're endangering people who are paying a lot of money to be in an event. So once you get the fans involved, boy, you got to be out. You can't be in And it. just this week, let's look at the NHL. They allow fighting. So the Islanders are playing in a series against Pittsburgh Penguins. How does the game end? In a fight. So if you're sitting at home, you're in the stands, there's acceptable behavior right there. Well, that's the my ice. point. The crowd is like, oh, yeah, you know, get. Oh, so, no, they're banging so, on the glass right. so, in the fight. So shirt. at what point in, in society do we say enough is enough? I mean, I, I think we need to be sharper about saying that is not behavior that we're going to put up with. But I think that there is some kind of mentality in this country where we kind of like that. Oh, there's yeah. definitely a, a, a part of it that has this kind of need to see ugliness, right? The same, the same it part of the us. Gladiators. Well, yeah. well, maybe or the same part of us that when we drive by an accident, yeah. we got to stop and yeah, look. I want to look at it. I want to look, but you, but, but we you look. Do. Yeah. And, and for us, in the how many games have we been to as UConn fans, or just you know covering UConn? and saw Jim Calhoun throw a tirade on the sidelines. What do we all do? We all look at each other and laugh. Oh, it's Jim being Jim, but what are other people thinking when he's screaming, cursing? Oh, Gino Oriama does the same thing. How many times have you been in a game where a coach does that? And we just look the other way. Oh, but I think there's a difference between a coach getting upset and yelling and pure violence or, or assault. On the, we, had, we saw it on the, on the soccer pitch but just a couple of weeks ago with Luis Suarez taking a bite out of an opponent. And now there are people coming to the front saying, you know, that was just gamesmanship. He was biting the guy so that the guy would throw him off and now the other guy was going to get called for a foul and not Suarez. To me, that's, that's an assault. And he should be he should be thrown out of the league. But John, don't you think you know that was a story for one day, and then where did the story go? It just kind of kind of fizzled out, right? But you know, it, he's had a pattern of behavior. Ron Artest has had a pattern of behavior. Now the leagues need to do something about that and address these guys who do it, and then maybe one, two, three strikes, then you're out for good. You know, one incident, you got to let it go. Maybe get the guy the right kind of help. Maybe it's mental issue uh, help as well. You know, and finding these guys who make so much money doesn't really do much. Listen, I want to continue this conversation. We're on a roll here, but we're out of time for television. So we're going to continue this over on sportsedge.com. That's where we'll, we'll keep this going. But for now, we're going to move on to our fitness and health segment. It's amazing how the simple things can be so critical to our general health. All right, guys, now let's get back to this because you, you brought up Ron Artest. He's a guy who I think should have been thrown out of the league right away. And this Suarez soccer player that we talked about, he has a history of saying racist things uh, on the field. And that brings us to the trash talk. We talked about this earlier, Eric. Kevin Garnett, great player, going to the Hall of Fame. But does he take it too far on the court when he attacks people at a personal level in an attempt to get under their skin in the name of, of gamesmanship? Yeah, it's a great question, but, you know, and I think back to the mid-'80s when Larry Bird was one of the biggest trash talkers in the world. We all watched Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. Now, now were they doing what Kevin Garnett is doing today? Were they doing the same thing, And but we just know about it quicker because of social media? Like, you know, 1985 when the Lakers and Celtics are playing, we read about the trash talk at Sports Illustrated a week later. Nowadays, we're reading about it that night on well, Twitter. I, I think, yeah, uh, well, I think that's, 
that's a lot where the trash talk starts. It starts on Twitter, and now that's becoming acceptable. And it, it's what price success, and at any expense, win, win, win. But I think I think society, in many ways, is out of control. And as I as I go back to this conversation, and it starts with kids, and you learn on the ballpark, and you try to do the right thing, and then as you get older and older, we'll look just the other way. Yeah, that probably wasn't the right thing you should do, and maybe you know you threw a punch and you shouldn't have. But we we accept this a lot, and I think it's I think we need to call a halt to this. And, and if you're an athlete and you do do that, you need to accept it, and you need to take responsibility for it. And if you have a child at home or kids looking up to you, you need to address that with them. But who's going to do yeah. that? Well, who's going to do that? They have to. I mean, you have to be a man if you're playing a sport and you throw a punch and you know you're wrong. You have to come out and admit that you're wrong. I think we're afraid to admit when we're wrong sometimes and take responsibility. I mean, when we play sports, your adrenaline gets pumping. You know, you don't know what's going to happen, and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of guys who have done things want to get it back right away. But we looked at Ron Artest. Serena Williams in tennis is another one who throws a lot of temper tantrums uh, as well. You know, um, who, who's policing her? You know, is her, does her dad have control of her? I think there's in, an intimidation factor when you're playing sports, right? You and, and I think that's part of gamesmanship where you want to intimidate your opponent. But then there's another thing where you take it to another level. And to me, sports is all about being in control of your body, being extremely disciplined, but it has to be in control of your mind too. So here's where leagues can mandate. We talked about hockey. The NFL is one of the most violent sports you'll ever find. But the but crowd loves no, it. The okay, crowd but there's no it. fighting allowed in the NFL. And if you throw a punch, you're suspended. Why is it not the same way in the, in the NHL? And they say the reason is because this is the way they, the, the guys police themselves, right? I don't buy it. I don't buy into that. I think it's I think it's ugliness. I think it's violent. And I think that kind of assault should be taken out. When you have guys wailing on each other and punching, even in baseball, when you get these little brawls, you rarely see anyone really punching, right? There's a whole lot of pushing. But it all that. gets back to who's going to stop this? Who in the league is going to stop you this? Are. But, you are. Know, <laughs> don't go. No, but that's, that's my point. Don't go. But don't we watch. do go. And we do pay these high prices to go see this. And we go, oh, you know, that was terrible, but we're going to go back the next but, week. But we, I don't think we go to a hockey game to look for fights. You look to watch someone play at a high level. I don't level. know. I, I, I sort of disagree uh, with you. I think somebody goes, oh, this is going to be really good. You know, I, I think there'll be a fight here. Well, of course you do. But if, you know, if you're a parent and you're seeing the stands, then it's your job to talk to your child about the fighting. It's, it's just held to, to the hockey game. And, you know, um, you know, but a lot, of, a lot of parents maybe, you know, pass the buck on that. And they don't address the issue. We have a lot of work to do, the four of us, to get out there <laughs> We're going to make this world so much better. <laughs> We're going to make sports so much better. We want to hear what you think now. So right here on SportsEdge.com. Write in your comments and maybe we'll share them uh, on TV or here on the website. Thanks for tuning in.